What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Sean Robert Johnson. As you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trent, New Jersey. I appreciate y'all tuning in to today's episode that we got for y'all, so let's just get straight to it. Welcome back to another episode of Prison Audio with your host, Sean Robert Johnson. That's me. As you know, I'm incarcerated at New Jersey State Prison in Trent, New Jersey, and I have been for the last 17 years for a self-defense case. And don't forget to become a subscriber for free on both of our YouTube channels, our main channel, at Prison Audio, and our secondary channel, at Sean Robert Johnson. Also follow us on Instagram, at Prison Audio, and at Shaw John 1222 which is S-H-A-W-J-O-H-N-1222. So for today's episode, I want to talk about a children's author, Corey Richards, hit with new charges, alleged earlier attempt to kill her husband. This is out of Salt Lake City, Utah. So the article says, for the prison news, a Utah woman who authorities say fatally poisoned her husband in 2022, then published a children's book about grief, now faces another attempted murder charge for allegedly drugging him weeks earlier on Valentine's Day. Corey Richens, who's 33 years old, is accused of killing her husband with a lethal dose of fentanyl at their home in a small mountain town near Park City in March 2022. New charging documents filed Monday by Summit County prosecutors alleged that was not her first attempt on his life. They detailed the perilous months preceding Eric Richens' death, painting a picture of a paranoid man walking on eggshells around his wife as she made secret financial arrangements and bought illicit drugs that were later found in the system. The prosecutors have said previously that Corey Richens, who is being held without bail, may have tried to poison her husband the month before his death, but they did not file the additional charges until this week. The chilling case of a once-beloved author accused of profiting off of her own violent crime has captivated true crime enthusiasts in the years since she was arrested at, She was arrested for her husband's murder. She had self-published Are You With Me, an illustrated storybook about a father with angel wings watching over his young son after passing away. Once lauded as a heartwarming must-read for any child who has lost a loved one, the book has since become a powerful tool for prosecutors arguing that Corey Richards carried out a calculated murder plot and attempted cover-up. The mother through repeatedly called her husband's death unexpected while promoting her book and was commended by many for helping her sons and other young children process the death of a parent. Her attorney, Sky Lazaro, did not immediately respond to requests for comment on the new charges. Lazaro has argued in earlier hearings that the evidence against her client was dubious and circumstantial. One bite of his favorite sandwich, left with a note in the front seat of his truck on Valentine's Day, made Eric Richens, 39, break out in hives and black out, prosecutors alleging new documents. His wife had bought the sandwich from a local diner in the city of Commerce the same week she also purchased seven dozen fentanyl pills, according to witnesses' statements and deleted text messages that were recovered by police. The state star witness, a housekeeper who claims to have sold her the drugs, told law enforcement that she gave Corey Richens the pills a couple of days before Valentine's Day. Later that month, Richens allegedly told the housekeeper that the pills she provided were not strong enough and asked her to procure stronger fentanyl, according to new charging documents. In witness testimony, two friends of Eric Richards recount phone conversations from the day prosecutors are now saying he was first poisoned by his wife of nine years. After injecting himself with his son's EpiPen and chugging a bottle of Benadryl, he woke up from deep sleep and told a friend, I think my wife tried to poison me. His friends say they noticed fear in his voice as Richards, who had no known allergies, told him that he felt like he was going to die and that his wife might be to blame. Opioids, including fentanyl, can cause severe allergic reactions, including hives. A month later, Corey Richards called 911 in the middle of the night to report that she had found her husband cold to the touch at the foot of their bed, according to the police. He was pronounced dead, and the medical examiner later found five times the lethal dosage of fentanyl in the system. One or two pills might be accidental. Twenty or five times the lethal dose is not accidental. That is someone who wants Eric dead, Summit County Chief Prosecutor Patricia Cassell 
Patricia Cassell said, she alleges that Richard slipped a synthetic opioid into a Moscow mule cocktail she made for her husband amid marital disputes and fights over a multi-million dollar mansion she purchased as an investment. Years before her husband's death, Corey Richards opened numerous life insurance policies on Eric Richards without his knowledge, with benefits totaling nearly $2 million, prosecutors allege. Corey Richards was also charged Monday with mortgage fraud and insurance fraud for allegedly forging loan applications and fraudulently claiming insurance benefit after his death. Prosecutors argue she was in finance distress when her husband died and said she mistakenly believed she would inherit his estate under terms of their prenuptial agreement. Newly released documents indicated she had a negative bank account balance. Old lenders more than $1.8 million was being sued by a creditor. Charging documents indicate Eric Richards met with a divorce attorney in an estate plan in October 2020, a month after he discovered that his wife made some major financial decisions without his knowledge. The couple's prenuptial agreement only allowed Corey Richards to profit off of her husband's success stone masonry business if he died while they were still married. Utah law prohibits anyone convicted of murder from profit and financially off their crime. So this is what's going on right now, and she about to go to trial soon coming up. And, you know, being on this side, look at people who are always innocent into proven guilty, and even though it seems like the evidence is stacked against her. But my whole thing is I always say this, right? If a person is in a relationship where they marry, why are you sitting there trying to kill the person that you would instead of just leaving? But from what the prosecutor trying to paint is that she needed the money. So being that she had the life insurance policies out totaling $2 million, I guess she felt that she was going to have a come up right there if, Indeed, this is what happened. So this is a crazy story right here, and I definitely will keep y'all posted on it. If you have any questions, any comments, call 1-800-366-0911. That's 1-800-366-0911. Or send an email to stories at prisonaudio.com. That's S-T-O-R-I-E-S, the at sign, P-R-I-S-O-N-A-U-D-I-O dot com. And don't forget to become a subscriber for free on both our YouTube channels, at Prison Audio, that's P-R-I-S-O-N-A-U-D-I-O, and at Sean Robert Johnson, that's S-H-A-W-N-R-O-B-E-R-T-J-O-H-N-S-O-N, and don't forget to be a follower on both of our Instagram pages, at Prison Audio and at Shaw John 1222 S-H-A-W-J-O-H-N-1222. So thank you for tuning in to another episode of Prison Audio with Sean Robert Johnson. That's me, your host, and everybody have a good day. Stay in tune for the next episode coming up.